Are you new to astronomy? Are you considering buying a scope? Uh, what I recommend is don't spend more money than you'll miss. Okay? Start slow, work your way up. Okay? Um, you can resell the scope if you don't damage it. So ultimately, if you know if you got a lot of money, start with the 18-inch motorized uh, reflector. Yeah, uh, that's like none of us, none of us. Um, so the question is, you start off with something small, okay? And I think this is the best value you can get for a new scope under $250. Um, I got this at Costco for $199. Okay. And I'll tell you what's good about it and why it's a good starting scope. Um, hint, it's not only a good starting scope, it is for advanced astronomers with multiple telescopes, it's one you keep. Okay. Um, I haven't opened this up yet. I've had some similar to this. I'm probably going to keep it. Why? Well, at $250, I can throw it in a suitcase, and if it gets on an airplane, and if it gets damaged, and I've done this before, uh, it's not a big deal, okay? But if you're starting in the sport, the hobby, and you're not sure whether you're gonna like it, um, you could resell this for, you know, so it's, the investment, the, the risk is, is rather low, okay? I'll tell you what's good about it, okay? Without opening it, here's what I suspect is great about this scope, okay? Four inches, okay? Obviously, the bigger scope you can get, the more you can see, the more powerful it is. It also gets heavier, and that's a negative. It's bulkier, okay? But four inches is kind of like, I'd say, the minimum. You can go smaller. There's value. There are niches, niches, uh, where a smaller than four-inch scope is uh, good. In fact, that, that one over there is a 90 millimeter, so it's, uh, it's less than that. It's my preferred scope. It's light. In fact, I had one, same brand, uh, 100 millimeter four inches it was a lot bigger. So size is good. So four inches, small, portable, light, which is good. Um, and it's really a reasonable minimum size. Okay. You can see good stuff. Moon's going to be good on this one in particular, Jupiter, Saturn, you'll be able to see the moons and, uh, the moons of Jupiter, the Galilean moons, you'll be able to see, uh, Jupiter, uh, Saturn's rings. So it's, it's a good minimum scope. And again, the moon is great in it, and the moon's always there. Um, this excels under a dark sky. One of my favorite nights, been observing a lot for decades, um, one of my favorite nights ever was with this little scope here. Same size, four, four inch, 102 millimeters, just like this one. Um, under a very dark sky, I saw things I couldn't see with the big scope here at home, or even with yeah, with the big scope, I can go out east where it's a dark sky in the mountains and I can see some things. But the pinwheel galaxy was visible with this in a dark sky, Mammoth Lakes, California. Um, so a four inch scope is moon's good, Jupiter, Saturn, you can see some stuff. Um, but in a dark sky, just pointing this through the Milky Way, four inches is, is plenty. Okay. Um, what I like about this particular scope, I can tell, is the mount. Okay. I want to show you some other mounts real quick. So if you are in a store, Sam's Club, wherever, or anywhere, and you see a scope and it's inexpensive, uh, first of all, Celestron, Mead, Skywatcher, Explore Scientific, uh, look for name brands that are known for astronomy. Uh, there are some other brands that uh, uh, you might have heard of, but they're not strong astronomy companies. Uh, I would be skeptical about those, but Celestron, Mead, Skywatcher, Explore Scientific, uh, Orion, can't forget Orion, uh, GSO. There's a variety of good astronomy ones. So if you see a cheap scope and it's one of those brands, it's likely to be good. However, what I would look for is if there's an equatorial mount, right, like this, avoid it. Do not buy an equatorial mount. If it says EQ, you don't want AQ, you want AZ. So AZ is, that's azimuth, side to side, and then up and down like this uh, here. So side to side, azimuth, up and down. That's altitude, azimuth, altitude. You want alt as, okay? Equatorial, they call that the hobby killer. It's, uh, it, it's, if I wanted to point this out the window I, at something, I'd have a really hard time doing that because I can't just point it, okay? This equatorial, uh, it's supposed to be this way, Pointed at the North Star, and then I'd have to point it this way, 
it's a pain. If you're new to it, there is no value. In fact, if you're not an astrophotographer, there is no value to having a equatorial scope. Okay. And if you are going to be an astrophotographer and you want to start it, this is not going to help you. So if you see an equatorial mount, avoid it. You're going to, it's a hobby killer. Okay. Azimuth, that's good. Okay. The other thing about azimuth, there's a variety of alt as mounts. This is the old style. That's where the axis for the up and down is down here. And the weight of the scope is on top of it. Okay. It's like balancing something on a ball. It's going to want to nosedive. Okay. It's okay. It's not preferred. Preferred is where the, the scope mounts right in line with the axis. You can bounce it out. Um, this is always going to want to fall forward or fall back. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit pause.